to gap or not to gap? That is the question we will be exploring in today's podcast episode. Now, if you're listening to this with the goal of having a magic bullet solution or a quick list of three yes or no questions that is going to give you the answer, that just doesn't exist, my friend. Instead, we are going to share some of the questions you should be asking yourself and the factors that should weigh into your decision making process. So grab a pen and paper and hunker down and let's get to work. sharing their stories, ideas, and experts diving deep into how you can make the right decisions in order to have a meaningful gap year. This is the place to be no matter where you are on your gap year journey. I'm Michelle Dittmer, your resident gap year expert. Let's jump right in. Hey there, and welcome to the Gap Year Podcast. My name is Michelle Dittmer, and I am your host and Gap Year expert. Now, no matter your decision-making style, whether it's exhaustive research, making extensive pro and con lists, looking and seeking out the opinions of others, or asking the universe for answers, or even just wallowing in indecision. The decision about what to do after high school can feel very, very overwhelming. This is one of the first major life decisions that we hear day in and day out is going to impact the rest of your life, or so people tell you. So of course it's going to impact your life, but It's definitely not something that will determine whether you're going to be happy or not, successful or not, a lawyer or not. Those are not things that this decision will define for you. And I can tell you with 100% certainty, listen to any of the episodes that we talk with professionals in the career space, like Sarah from Careergasm or um, going a ways back to to um, Karina D'Souza and from Future Casting, all of these people talk about how there are multiple paths to success and moving forward. So while it is a big decision, uh, it's not because it will define how successful or happy you will be. Um, it will not set you on a one-way super highway to your future. Um, it is a big decision because it's a big investment of time and money and And those two things are very precious to us. And so therefore, this decision must be made carefully. So while we won't go into the specifics of which program to choose, which college or university is right for you, if you should choose college or not, what we're going to do in this episode is we're really going to weigh the gap year or school options. So which one of those two is the best fit for you? Um, And just as a side note here, we're going to use the term higher education um, rather than always specifying college or university. It's a little bit more inclusive and gives you the option to really explore which one of those you are thinking. So when I say higher education, you can insert that with the pathway that you think might be right for you. So there you go. That's that's what we have for kind of our housekeeping for today. Um, Now we're going to ask you or I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions and I highly recommend that you grab a pen and paper, that you make use of your pause button and you do some deep thinking and soul searching about the answers to these questions. These are not easy yes or no questions and this isn't something that you can fully do while listening to this podcast on your walk to school, but by following these guided questions, it will help in the overall process. So I guess what I'm saying is the more effort that you put into thinking about these questions and really deeply understanding what your responses are, the more clear your decision will become if a gap year or higher education is the right step for you next year. 
So let's get right to it and let's waste no time and jump into these questions. So the first question when I'm speaking with students that are kind of wavering between those two and not sure which is the right way to go, I always start off with asking, are you excited about starting higher education next year? Are you excited for two, three, four, five, fifteen 15 more years of school in your life right now? And I think it's very important that we're asking this question about next year. We're not asking, are you excited about going to higher education in the future? We're asking very specifically about next year. And the reason I have to specify that is a gap year and higher education are not mutually exclusive. You are simply postponing your entry into higher education by a year. So it's still going to come. It's still going to happen. But the question is, is it going to happen next year or is it going to happen the year after? So when you're asking yourself this question, am I excited about starting higher education next year? Be very, very clear about that. So if the answer is a resounding yes, yes, I'm excited, this is this feels right, it feels good, that's probably a strong indicator that higher ed is a good step for you, but I would encourage you to keep listening anyways. There's a couple other questions to ask yourself, but if you're, if you're feeling really excited about next year and the, the prospect of going to higher ed, then maybe you need to listen to that voice. But If the answer to that excitement question is a weak yes, like, um, yeah, I guess I am excited, or uh, maybe I'm excited, or even a no, I want you to follow up and ask yourself, why am I not excited about going into higher ed next year? And when I ask this question of the folks that I'm working with, I hear a lot of common things. I hear quite often that um, I am burnt out or I need a break. I've spent 14 years as a student. I have worked really hard in my grade 12 year and I just need a break. So I'm not excited because I can't handle more school right now. Um, I also hear I want to experience the real world before going into more school. I want to understand what it's like to have a job. I want to see parts of the world that are not my local community. So I hear that often too. Something else that's really common is I don't feel ready. Um, And when I dig a little further, in some cases, I don't feel mature enough or old enough, or I have some other stuff that I'm dealing with that I want to get a handle on. But there's something that that's making me feel not ready for that next step. So I hear that too. Um, Other things that are kind of that excitement sucker is when people feel pressured by their parents to do something that doesn't interest them. So um, parents that are pushing strongly towards accounting or law school or med school, or they have particular expectations that don't necessarily align with the young person. And sometimes people just feel they need some a year to figure it out, to gain the confidence, to really understand which pathway is right for them. Um, I also hear that um, I'm not excited because I'm really stressed about the finances, that I don't have enough to pay for school, or I'm really anxious about taking on that much debt. Um, and so that's another viable reason that's that's taking out some of that excitement. Um, and I guess one of the other most, most common is that uh, I often hear, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to study um, or where I want to go. So that's that's the first question and some of the common answers I hear. But let's dive a little bit deeper um, into the I don't know where I want to go or what I want to study, because I think that's a really important thing to weigh in this decision if a gap year is right for you. So the next question you can ask yourself is, what would I study at school and why? So when I talk to a lot of families and I ask this question, I often hear, I don't know what I want to study, or I have too many interests, there's too many things that I'm really curious about, or I have no interests at all. I haven't found that thing that I want to pursue for another four years. And that's that's real. You're, you're in grade 12, you haven't seen all the things that are out there, um, and we don't necessarily know what life path we have. So 
I think that that those are all very, very valuable reasons to um, to consider maybe taking a gap year. So when I hear about some people having direction, they, they know what they want to study, sometimes their why isn't quite as clear or as steadfast and true to who they are. So often I hear, well, I'm going to go into biology because that's where I get my best marks. Or I'm going to go into um, engineering because I know there's a career at the end of it and it makes good money. Um, Or I'm going to be a teacher because it's got a stable job. Or I'm going to go into um, steelwork because there is a strong union and pension. Um, I often hear someone told me I would like to do it. That's their why. Um, Or that their friends are doing it. And all those things... Um, can play into our decision. But when that's the core reason, maybe you're not picking the right program for the right reasons. So when I ask people what I'm looking for is I'm looking for there to be some sort of internal motivation, like this topic really interests me and I'm curious to learn more. Or I know that there are experts out there with lots of experience that I want to learn from. Um, There are leaders in the space that I want to surround myself with. Because the reality is moving into higher education shouldn't just be an extension of high school. It shouldn't just be you just move directly from grade 12 into grade 13, 14, 15, 16, but rather it's a choice. And it's an expensive choice. And it's an, really an opportunity to learn from those specialists, to find like-minded peers who are curious about the same things that you are, and to get involved in a community in new ways. And if you are not aligning yourself with the things that you are curious about, the pathways that you want to explore, if your why is not aligned with that intrinsic piece, you're going to surround yourself with the wrong experts. You're going to get into the wrong communities that are not necessarily going to help you on the journey that you want to be on. So those are all things to consider when you're when you're looking at what would I study and why. Now, the part B to that question is ask yourself, what would I do on a gap year and why? And I think it's really important to be able to look at both sides of this coin. We want to be able to compare apples to apples. It's not comparing a known entity of university or college uh, in a specific program. We, we know how to be a student. That's very comfortable. But we need to be able to compare that to what you would actually do on a gap year, not just a blank year with nothing planned. But we need to be able to compare apples to apples and say, OK, I could go be a student at X school in X program. And I know that there's going to be tests and assignments and labs Or I'm going to take a gap year and on my gap year, I'm going to have a job and I'm going to travel and I'm going to volunteer. So really, really sit down and ask yourself, what would I do on my gap year and why? Again, that same extension of the question, why? So are you going to work, volunteer, travel, intern, take courses, take a vacation, learn a language, focus on your mental health, start a business, build a portfolio, earn money? What is it that you want to do on your gap year? Now, you don't have to have a concrete plan, but you need to have those ideas that are enough to give you that apple to apple comparison. Now, When you ask yourself that why, I find the gap year answers are often a little bit easier and a little bit more true because you're creating something for yourself, something that fulfills your own dreams, desires, and goals. So there's often a direct correlation between the activities that you're choosing and the reason for engaging in those activities. So for example, maybe you want to volunteer with the Canadian Wildlife Federation, um, Uh, and and maybe doing habitat restoration because you're passionate about the environment and you want to contribute firsthand and you want to get some some hands-on experience. Or maybe you want to spend time developing your portfolio with new art pieces so you can get into a program of your choice. Whatever it is, um, those whys need to be connected to the activities. Now, things that stick out for me as warning signs that maybe a gap year isn't the right path is when I say, well, what would you do on your gap year? And the the answer is a flat out, I don't know or I have no ideas. Let me be straight. Planning a gap year is a lot of work. 
more work than going to school, 100%. I'm not going to I'm not going to sugarcoat that. It's more work than going to school. Um a year of picking your own activities is a lot of white space to fill. So without any ideas, even if it as is as simple as I'm going to get a job to earn money to pay for school, without those ideas, the time can turn into a wasted year. So that's not what we want from our gap year. So really understanding the what would you do and why is going to be really, really important. Now, looking at both of these questions, what would I study and where would I go and why and what would I do on my gap year and why, often the gap year pathway brings up a lot more excitement. Um, But we also have to be very pragmatic in this decision. So we need to weigh some other factors here. So while it's important that your dreams and your heart and your aspirations and your excitement are there, it's not just about following those things. We have to ask some other questions in order to fully understand which pathway is going to be right for us. So I think actually the most important question to ask yourself is almost the flip side of what we've been asking ourselves. We need to look at this question from both angles. What is stopping me from going into higher education? Or what is stopping me from taking a gap year? But the really important part here is the follow-up question, just like the why from the previous questions is, are those good reasons for not pursuing that pathway? So it's so important to ask ourselves this this follow-up question because we often have like subconscious ideas that we need to unpack and we need to investigate a little bit further. So some common things that, that I unpack in conversations with students is that I'm I'm not going to take a gap year because all my friends are going into higher ed and that's more comfortable and everybody's going into higher education. I hear uh, I don't want to be left behind so I'm going to go into higher education or I'm going to go into higher education because I don't want to let my parents down. They expect me to go on to higher ed. So those are those are kind of three of the most common things that that I feel are really strong narratives in people's minds. So I just want to unpack that a little bit. So that idea that everybody is going on to higher education. Um, I can tell you I was in a conference this week and the data came back that 33 percent of students in higher education took one or more years before going into post-secondary. So that's a third of students take time off. So the idea of everyone is very, very false. One third took a year or more off. The idea of being left behind, that was another one. I always ask, behind what? What are are you racing towards? What is one year in your long and beautiful life? Um, And if you want more data, I can tell you that people who take a gap year, they actually go into higher ed with more clarity and they've picked the right program in the first place because they've spent that extra time to figure it out. And what happens is they actually graduate before their peers who ended up in the wrong program and switched 100 times and took all these extra courses to figure it out. You've actually done that work on your gap year. So the fear of being left behind while real, we have to ask ourselves, is that a real thing um, and should is that a good enough decision to do what I what I want or what I should be doing and the last one I don't want to let someone down I hear this all the time oh my parents would never agree to that or it's just expected in my family that we do this now what I ask is have you actually had those conversations or conversations are you just making it up in your head and I think often we are making assumptions about what our parents and supporters think is the right path for us. And I think that we need to have those conversations. We need to have the confidence instead of making assumptions. Now, I hear this a lot in first generation Canadians. I hear this a lot in racialized groups. Um, And I hear this a lot in white collared families that have all pursued higher education, Um, that there is an assumption that our parents wouldn't be on board with it. And whether it's true or not, you need to have that conversation um, because you 
would be surprised how many families I talk to where the parents are totally on board and the, the kids are like, I'm flabbergasted. I would never have thought my parents would have supported this idea. And I'm so glad I had that conversation. And even if they, they don't support it, um, which we're going to get into next, you need to have that conversation regardless. So there you go. So really exploring the um, what's getting in my way and are, is that a real reason? Is that a good reason that I shouldn't pursue one or the other of these pathways? Now, up until now, pretty much everything has been very personal because this is a highly personal decision because it's going to impact your life. But the reality is that this decision also needs to include your family, whether that is from a financial perspective, whether that is from a cultural perspective, you need the support of your family. So the question you need to ask is, do I have my parents' support for my decision? And that's a decision to go into higher ed. That's a decision to take a gap year. Do I have the support of my parents? And if it's a yes, you're very lucky and should just roll with it. But if it's a no, don't give up on it. You will have to have some challenging conversations, but you need to help them understand your point of view. You need that financial support. You need that moral support, no matter which of the pathways you don't have support for. Now, if you're considering a gap year and you're nervous about that conversation, I did an entire podcast and we'll link it to it in the show notes. As well, we have an incredible download about talking to your parents and how to prepare for that conversation and how to deal with the conflict that might arise. So we've got the supports there for you if you are nervous about that conversation. So again, we'll link to that in the show notes for you. So ultimately, these questions are really great guiding questions to give you a super high level understanding of your options and your goals for your life after after high school. But there are other tools that you can use. So I'm a good fan of the good old pro and con list. Make two. Make the first one for going into higher ed, pros and cons. And the second one, taking a gap year, pros and cons. And look at both of those lists and see where there are similarities. See where the things are are getting in the way. It's a really, really great way to get some clarity. Um, and even better yet, use our post-secondary education decision-making tool. Again, this is another download that we have. We'll link to it in the show notes. But what you need to do here is you may need to make a list of all of the things that you are looking forward to in higher education. So whether that's Frosh Week, whether that's moving out, whether that is learning from a professor, whatever that might be, really, really list them out And then what I want you to do beside each one of those, and the worksheet makes it a little bit simpler, is I want you to identify that if you took a gap year, would those things become impossible? Would they just simply be delayed by a year? Or would they still be possible? Could you still achieve those things? So for example, uh, moving out. That is something that you could still do on your gap year if you chose that pathway. Whereas things like uh, Frosh Week, that is something that maybe it's just going to be delayed a year. You can still have a frosh week after your gap year. Uh, Or maybe it is something like living in residence with my best friend who's also going to the same school. That would be something that might be impossible because maybe your friend won't want to live in residence after first year, or it might be delayed. Maybe you'll move in together in second year. So being able to to put things into perspective that way will really help you see that there is a longer game to be played than just now or never. There are some things that are simply going to be delayed if you choose to take a gap year. Um, So I think that's a really, really great tool, again, linked in the show notes. So while there is no surefire, surefire, one size fits all way to figure out which pathway is right for you, um, we do have an online quiz, again, linked in the show notes here, that will ask you some very pointed questions. And not only will it get you thinking, but it will also at the end calculate a result for you. It's not 100% accurate, but what it will do based on the outcomes of the questions that you answered is it will connect you with resources that can really help you no matter which pathway is right for you. Those resources will be tailored and custom to your responses, and it will help you in moving forward. So cangap.ca slash quiz, great place to start if you are considering this. So check that out. Now, 
basically all of these questions are, are tools for you. And in the end, you still have to learn how to do your research. You need to learn and to reflect on your why. And you need to check in with your support networks. All of these things will then allow you to make bold decisions. And to keep things in perspective, all of these things are life skills. This is one of the first major life decisions you're going to have to make, but there are many, many more to come. No decision that you make right now is a life sentence. We are all on multi-path, multi-prong, twisty-turvy, U-turn life paths, and you are going to make the best decision for yourself given the information that you have available to you right now. Will you change course? Probably. Will you find something new uh, about yourself and make a different decision later on in life? Absolutely. But no step forward is a step in the wrong direction. Now, let me tell you, I'm going to leave you with one piece of sage advice. You might have to noodle on it for a little bit. But in this moment, there is no wrong decision. In this moment, there is no right decision. So with that, my friends, I am going to give a little mic drop and wish you the best of luck. Check out all of those downloads and we look forward to supporting you in your decision making process. Take care and until next time, keep on adventuring. Mm -hmm.